What we're going to do now is show the process of mixing the base coats, the dry mix, the T2000 dry mix, and foam and base adhesive. First, with the T2000 dry mix, what this is is a Portland cement acrylic mixture. What we're going to do is we're going to put in about three quarts of water, three to four quarts of water. We take the sack in its entirety, and with this product, all you add is water. You can mix any portion of this or a full bag at a time. with a paddle mixer. With this product, you want to mix it to a fairly thin consistency. You do not want it stiff for the fact that once this material will take a set, then we're going to come back and break that set. We do not want to add water to it a second time. So we want to make sure that we mix it thin enough the first time. We'll mix that and just till the... You can see this consistency is fairly thin still. And when that takes a set, an initial set will come back and break that set. This is the T2000 product we've mixed before. We've let this sit about 10 minutes and it's taken the initial set. You can see that how stiff it's got at this point. All we want to do, we do not want to add more water. What we'll do is we'll just remix this. You can see that breaks the initial set, brings it back to the consistency that we want to have it to be able to spread the product. This is the foam base coat adhesive product. This is the, we'll add a cement product to this. What we want to do with this is sometimes that it'll have a tendency to separate just a little bit with an acrylic floating to the top. What we want to do is pre-stir this. to make sure the acrylic is mixed back into the material. What we're going to do with this product, we'll take 50% of this pail or half of this pail, put into another pail. This is a 90 pound sack of cement, so basically you should be able to get three pails out of one sack of cement. A good measure on this is once you have the half pail of the, of the admixture, fill that about level with Portland cement, that's just approximately 30 pounds. What you're going to need to do at that point is to add just a small amount of water.
At this point, you can add another small amount of water just to adjust the consistency. Again, with this product, we want to start out with it fairly thin because it's going to take an initial set. Here again, we're going to let that stir up to a fairly thin consistency, and once that takes an initial set, we'll break that set again. It should be just about the viscosity that we want to use to spread. The exact amount of tint has been shot into this to achieve a particular color. We'll dump that right directly into the bucket. At this point, we want to take some clean, fresh, potable water. And through several times of washing out this tint vial, to make sure we get all of the tint out of the vial into the bucket. The finish actually comes from the factory a little bit stiff for this process to be able to add water. You can add up to 8 to 10 ounces of water to the finish. Again, making sure that we get all the tint into the bucket. Again, blending the material, make sure that you take plenty of time with the mixer to make sure that all of the tint is mixed in to directly into the material. Once you've completed with the product and you have leftover material, the best thing to do with your pail is to take a, a wet brush and a little bit of water, wipe the lid, rim down, clean the area inside the bucket of the edges and then throw just a little bit of water on top of it to make sure that there's a water seal and at that point making sure that the lid is pressed firmly 